Good morning. Today we are going to review RC circuits for AP Physics C electricity and magnetism. Flippin' Physics! Up until this point, we have assumed all changes in electric current, electric potential difference, and charge on a capacitor plates were instantaneous. Today we put a resistor and a capacitor together in an electric circuit and learn how those variables change as functions of time. This is called an RC circuit because it is a resistor and a capacitor in a circuit. Right. We start with a circuit composed of an uncharged capacitor, a resistor, and a battery, and an open switch, all connected in series. At time initial, or time equals zero, we close the switch. This is called charging a capacitor through a resistor. Let's start by adding a loop in the direction of current flow in the circuit, which is clockwise. Then let's use Kirchhoff's loop rule starting in the lower right-hand corner of the circuit. Bobby, could you please do that? Okay, Kirchhoff's loop rule states that the electric potential difference around a loop equals zero. Starting in the lower right-hand corner and moving in the direction of the loop, the first circuit element we come across is the switch. However, after we close the switch, that just acts like any other wire in the circuit, and all the wires have negligible resistance. So next up is the battery. We are moving from the negative to the positive terminal of the battery, so the electric potential goes up as we move in the direction of the loop across the battery, so that is a positive EMF. The next circuit element is the capacitor. Well, as the battery moves charges in the circuit, positive charges will be pushed in the direction of the current and will build up on the bottom of the plate of the capacitor and negative charges will be pushed opposite the direction of the current and will build up on the top plate of the capacitor. That means the electric potential will go down as we go across the plates of the capacitor in the direction of the loop so we subtract the electric potential difference across the capacitor. I thought negative charge carriers, or electrons, were really the only thing which moved to cause current in electric circuits. Sure, that is what is really happening. However, we always work with conventional current, which is the direction positive charges would flow if they were actually moving. So do positive charges actually build up on the bottom plate of the capacitor? Actually, positive charges do not build up on the bottom plate of the capacitor. What actually happens is that electrons are moved off the bottom plate, which causes a net positive charge on the bottom plate. However, this is a good general representation of what occurs and helps to understand RC circuits. So let's keep Bobby's approximation of what is going on here. Bobby? Okay, next is the resistor. In a previous lesson, we determined that electric potential goes down when moving in the direction of the current across a resistor, so we subtract the electric potential difference across the resistor. Bo, please substitute equations in for electric potential difference across the capacitor and the resistor. Sure. We know capacitance equals charge over electric potential difference, so the electric potential difference across the capacitor equals charge over capacitance. And we know Ohm's law states that the electric potential difference across a resistor equals the current through a resistor times the resistance of the resistor. Thank you, Bo. However, we are going to use a lowercase q for charge because the charge is changing as a function of time. And we are going to use lowercase i for current because the current is also changing as a function of time. So please realize charge q and current i are both changing as functions of time in this Kirchhoff's loop rule equation. Okay, let's look at limits. Starting with time initial equals zero, we stated earlier that we are charging a capacitor through a resistor and that the capacitor starts with zero charge on it. Therefore, the initial charge on the capacitor equals zero. Realize that also means the, the initial electric potential difference across the capacitor is also zero. You can see that is true from the equations, the equation for electric potential difference across the capacitor, which Bo gave us. Billy, please use the loop equation to determine the initial current in the circuit. Absolutely. From the Kirchhoff's loop rule equation, we know zero equals the EMF across the battery minus, well, the initial charge is zero, so zero divided by the capacitance of the capacitor minus well, the initial current in the circuit times the resistance of the resistor, 
That means initial current times resistance equals EMF. So the initial current in the circuit equals the EMF across the battery divided by the resistance of the resistor. Oh, and because the charge of the capacitor will increase as a function of time, electric potential difference across the capacitor will also increase over time. This means the electric potential difference across the resistor will decrease over time, and that means the current in the circuit will decrease as a function of time. In other words, the initial current in the circuit is also the maximum current. Thank you, Billy. Now, let's look at the limit after a long time. Please realize after a long time in the parlance of RC circuits means you can consider time final to be equal to approximately infinity. But tell me what you know about this RC circuit after a long time or roughly an infinite amount of time. Well, the current start starts at its maximum value and decreases the entire time. So after a long time, the final current in the circuit is roughly zero. That means the electric potential difference across the resistor also equals zero. You can see that from Ohm's law. Substituting current final of zero into the loop equation shows us that the charge final on the capacitor equals the EMF across the battery times the capacitance of the capacitor. And because we know the charge has been increasing this whole time, we know the charge final on the capacitor is also the maximum charge on the capacitor. Well done, Bo. Thanks. Now, we're about to derive equations for charge and current as functions of time. However, before we do, I want to point out that AP Physics C electricity and magnetism students are responsible for knowing how to derive these equations. So yes, you need to understand these derivations and you need to be able to do them on your own. And actually, we already did a derivation very similar to this when we derived the equations of motion with a drag force, if you remember that from AP Physics C mechanics. Okay, let's start by solving for the charge on the capacitor as a function of time. Here we go. Starting with our Kirchhoff's loop rule equation, we move current times resistance to the other side of the equation. Divide the whole equation by resistance. We know current equals the derivative of charge with respect to time. And actually, let's pause here for a moment. Typically on an AP free, AP free response question, where they ask you to solve for something like this, they will actually put it in two parts. First, they ask you to, de to determine a differential equation which can be used to solve for whatever you're solving for. In this case, charge on the capacitor as a function of time. This equation right here, the derivative of charge with respect to time equals electromotive force over resistance minus the charge over the quantity resistance times capacitance, is the answer to that question. This equation is the differential equation which can be used to solve for charge on the capacitor as a function of time. I figured it would be helpful to know that. It is. Thanks. Yeah, thanks. Okay, back to the solution. Our goal here is to get dq and q on the left-hand side of the equation and dt, dt on the right-hand side of the equation so we can take the integral of the whole equation. To do that, we start by getting a common denominator, common denominator of resistance times capacitance on the right-hand side. We can factor out the inverse of resistance times capacitance, and then factor out a negative one from the parenthetical expression on the right-hand side. I do want to point out that this particular step where we factor out negative one is the one step I find students most often forget. So please remember to factor out negative one at this point in the derivation. I'll make a special note of that, Mr. P. Thank you, Billy. Next, we divide the whole equation by the quantity charge minus electromotive force times capacitance, and we multiply the whole equation by dt. And then we take the integral of the whole equation. On the left-hand side, we are taking the integral with respect to charge, so our limits are in terms of charge. Bobby, what are those limits? Well, the initial charge on the capacitor is zero, so the initial limit is zero. The final charge on the capacitor is charge maximum, or EMF times capacitance, so EMF times capacitance is the final limit for charge. Actually, Bobby, I know the final charge on the capacitor is the electromotive force times the capacitance, however, 
What we are solving for here is the charge as a function of time. So our final limit for the charge is the charge at some time t after we close the switch. In other words, the final limit on charge is the variable lowercase q, which, re which represents the charge at time t. Bobby, what then do you think the integral limits are on the right-hand side? Okay. Uh, on the right-hand side, we are taking the integral with, res with respect to time. So time initial is zero, and time final... Uh, Oh, oh, time final is, is just lowercase t, and that represents the time variable in the equation we are solving for charge as a function of time. Exactly, Bobby. Thanks. On the right-hand side, resistance and capacitance do not change as a function of time, so we can take those out from the integral. On the left-hand side, the integral with respect to charge of the inverse of the quantity charge minus electromotive force times capacitance is the natural log of the quantity charge minus electromotive force times capacitance. Uh, what? I, I don't remember that. How, how do we know that? That equation is among the common calculus equations on the table of information provided to us oh. by the college board during the AP exam. It, it is? That is helpful. How did I miss that? I do not know. We can substitute in the limits on the left-hand side. And the natural log of x minus the natural log of y equals the natural log of the quantity x divided by y. And the integral of dt from time 0 to time t is just t. So on the right-hand side, we have the negative of time t divided by the quantity resistance times capacitance. And now we can take e to the power of the whole equation. On the left-hand side, we know e to the power of the natural log of x equals x. So on the left-hand side, we now have charge minus electromotive force times capacitance, all divided by the negative of electromotive force times capacitance. On the right-hand side, we have e to the power the quantity negative t time t divided by the quantity resistance times capacitance. Billy, remind me what we are solving for. We are solving for the charge on the capacitor as a function of time, so we multiply through by negative electromotive force times capacitance, move electromotive force times capacitance to the right-hand side of the equation. We can factor out electromotive force times capacitance, and we have an equation for charge as a function of time when charging a capacitor in an RC circuit. Very nice, Billy. Notice, this equation fits our limits for charge. When time t equals zero, we get e to the power zero in the equation. Class, what is the value of e to the power zero? Negative one? One. Zero? e to the power zero equals one. I, right. I knew yes, that. Yes, it does. Therefore, when time equals zero, this equation shows that the charge on the capacitor is zero. Bo. What about the charge when time equals infinity? Well, if we plug infinity in for time, we get e to the negative infinity, which is... Zero? Yeah, zero. Sure, zero. Uh, I feel like you should know all of these numbers. Yeah, I probably should. So, this equation shows that the charge on the capacitor after roughly an infinite amount of time equals EMF times capacitance. And we already showed that equals the maximum charge of the capacitor. <laughs> yeah, we could substitute charge maximum into the equation for charge as a function of time. Thanks, Bo. This is the graph for charging an initially uncharged capacitor through a resistor as a function of time. You can see the initial charge is zero, the charge on the capacitor increases according to the equation we solved for, and it asymptotes to the maximum charge, which is equal to electromotive force times capacitance. Bobby, please solve for the current in the circuit as a function of time. Okay. Um, current equals the derivative of charge with respect to time. Sure. And we now have an equation for the charge on the capacitor as a function of time. Right. We can substitute the equation for charge we just solved for into that equation. Actually, could you go back a few steps and use EMF times capacitance minus EMF times capacitance times e to the power negative time over the quantity resistance times capacitance, 
Please. Okay. EMF and capacitance are both constant as a function of time, so the derivative of that is zero. And we can take EMF times capacitance out from the derivative. The derivative of e to the power of negative time over resistance times capacitance. Uh, oh, 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 the equation for this is also on the, the table of information. That means the derivative of, of e to the power of negative time over resistance times capacitance equals negative 1 over resistance times capacitance all times e to the power of negative time over resistance times capacitance. So the current through the circuit as a function of time equals EMF over resistance times e to the power of negative time over resistance times capacitance. Well done, Bobby. Billy, please determine the limits of the current through the RC circuit. Certainly. When we substitute 0 in for time t into the equation for current, we get e to the negative 0, which equals 1. <laughs> so the initial current in the RC circuit equals electromotive force divided by resistance. And we already determined that is the maximum current, so we can substitute current maximum back into the equation for current as a function of time. And for the limit after a long time, we can substitute infinity in for time in the current equation. e to the negative infinity equals zero. So the current in the RC circuit is zero after a long time, which is what we got before. Thank you, Billy. And this is the graph for that equation. You can see the initial current is at a maximum value of electromotive force divided by resistance, and the current decreases according to the equation we solved for and asymptotes at a current of zero. So, notice that, according to both of our graphs, after a long time, the RC circuit reaches a steady-state condition where the charge across the capacitor is at its maximum value. Realize the electric potential difference is also steady at its maximum value. We know this because the electric potential difference across the capacitor equals the charge on the capacitor divided by its capacitance. The charge has re reached a steady state, and the capacitance of the capacitor is constant, therefore the electric potential difference has also reached a steady state. This also means that, after a long time, the current through the circuit has reached a steady state value of zero. And the electric potential difference across the resistor is also zero because it equals current times resistance, and the current through the resistor has a constant value of zero. And now we get to talk about the time constant. Time constant? Yep. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
All we have to do is substitute one time constant in for time t in our charge equation. We get e to the negative time constant over time constant, which is e to the power negative 1. Class, what does e raised to the power negative 1 equal? 0 0.368. You remember that, but you didn't remember that e to the negative infinity equals 0? People are strange. Okay. When you're a stranger. That makes me feel lonely. Perhaps even unwanted. Or down. And we get that the charge of the capacitor, one time constant after closing the switch, equals 0 0.632 times the maximum charge on the capacitor. In other words, after one time constant, the capacitor has reached 63.2% of its maximum charge. Okay. Yeah. And if we look at the current through the circuit after one time constant, you can see that we again get e to the power negative 1. And the current in the circuit after one time constant equals 0 0.368 times the maximum current in the circuit. In other words, after one time constant, the current through the circuit has decreased 63.2% from its maximum value. Sure. Yeah. Okay. The definition of the time constant is the time it takes for a change of 63.2% to occur. And if you really want to know more about the time constant, I go into more detail about it in my video, Time Constant and the Drag Force. Links are in logical locations. <laughs> now, there are similar equations for charge and current when discharging a capacitor through a resistor. The derivations of those equations are similar enough to what we just did that we are not going to take the time to do those today. But you do need to know how to derive them. Groovy! Yay. Thanks. That concludes my review of RC circuits for AP Physics C, Electricity, and Magnetism. Next time, we are going to review magnetic fields. Thank you very much for learning with me today. I enjoy learning with you.